Good morning, millennials. Chic, c'est la vie. C'est bon. C'est bon. Yes, I do speak French. How was your night? I guess that was your, like, uh. Yeah, let's talk about me. Um. It was good. I'm paying the price now. Like, I'm in shambles. Like, oh, is that why you don't feel well? I've been because you drank for 20 minutes. No, but I didn't know you were hungover. I just thought you were complaining. No, I'm so hungover because I really actually, like, haven't drank in a while. But, like, I just... Not since Sunday. I couldn't be tamed. Like, I think I was drunker last night than I was at your wedding. Really? I wasn't even that drunk at your wedding. I was just tired. That's so crazy that you're here then. That's what I'm saying. Okay, it's now like, I understand why you've been Why I've been, I've been annoying. Right. Um, no, but, but I love when I do the show hungover. Like, it makes for good. I canceled all my appointments. It's like after. when you do the show with a concussion. You just never know what you're going to say. Yeah, you've been really spiraling this week, <laughs> and it's because of your concussion. Yeah, if I say... How are you feeling, by the way? I feel okay. My, my head still hurts to... The, actually, less so. I'm feeling a lot better. I think I'm out of the woods. Yeah, I'm out of the woods. Yeah, I'm out of the woods. you could be the next uh, Billy... What's that guy's name? Oxyclean? Billy, um... Billy Oxyclean. Yeah, why? The guy from the commercials. Did he hit his head? He was taking his luggage out on the plane, hit his head, died the next day. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's why they got the new guy. That's... I didn't realize Tragic. that's how he died. Yes, airplane. That's very really sad. TBG wrote about it. Did you see on GMA Sully Met Sully? No. Sully, the dog. The dog, whose namesake is Sully Sullenberger, met Sully the dog. Oh, wow. Double the pit for me. Yeah. Because I never got my photo from the meet and greet. And, like, Sully dogs. Are we he speaking even, English? He doesn't Are even people know. following? He doesn't even know. Usually I have the stream pulled up, but it's so distracting today, like I can't. But like when I'm not watching the stream and both like comments flow in, I'm like, oh, we're not on the air, you know? Yeah, we're on the air. People are enjoying my boots. Oh. And my I mean, sweater. Billy Mays. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I gotta say like this. <laughs> Billy Mays. I just want to point out that two days in a row, I wore heels. Yes, I wore heels yesterday for a meeting that was canceled. Thank you guys so much, by the way. The people who canceled on me are still here. Um, but so I had to rewear the shoes today. But I wear heels every day. Yeah, we do. We look this I'm in, nice I'm in every a lot day. of pain. We look this nice every day. You can put your foot down. Yeah. Just like. So the show was great. Countess, you know, I saw the first Countess show ever, like exactly a yeah. year ago, but I never got to recap it. She's really had the same trajectory as your tour. Started in February, Did went I around mean, the world, I back was in New York. This to anyone who would listen last night. Oh. But I'm like, she's really, like, uh, she goes to markets and tests them for me. Because where she goes, I go, because it's like the same audience. Yeah. Love it. So how was the show? Show was great. The show has definitely evolved since I last saw it. When I first saw it, she only sang one of her songs. Now she sings all three, thank God. Um, she's gotten more comfortable on stage, same Giovanni fashions. They did a Q&A, and obviously I asked a question, and I live streamed. Did you watch my live stream? I saw it in the toasters. It was so incredibly lit. They asked Margaret to ask a question, and me, and then also Aviva asked a question. And honestly, like Aviva, when Aviva spoke, I was like, stop. What was her question? <laughs> she goes, Luan. And Luan's like, yes, my darling. She goes... How are you surviving those bitches without me? And I'm like, she's doing just fine, Aviva. Thank you. But Aviva was actually so nice to be backstage. I should stop talking shit. I have got to stop talking shit. Speaking of talking shit and needing to put our foot in our mouths, today is a very special day because we have a guest, someone who has really been a cornerstone of, is that the right word? Yeah. Uh, of this show. He's actually the inspiration behind our baskets. Um, Nick Bio will be joining us. Um, I don't really have anything else to say because I'm honestly really scared. I'm really scared here. We're going from talking shit to eating shit. Literally. <laughs> my favorite. With a little cherry on top. So that'll be later in the show. Everyone gird your loins. I think it's going to be great. I actually have no idea how it's going to go. It's going to be incredibly Interesting. fulfilling, I, I think. Yeah. Um, but just keep your uh, hand on that mute button, Jake, just in case he, he, go, he goes off because he really could. He really could. And rightfully so. Um, anyways, so much news is going on the in the world. The world doesn't stop turning. So I think it's time to just jump right in to the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, our number one story. But actually, you know what? Sorry. Before we do that, a message from our sponsors. By the way, do you ever use Headspace? Yes. It's like, like the you... meditating app. Olivia made me use it in LA like two years ago, and I'm like, oh, she's crazy, and I literally had the best sleep of my life, and now Ben has started to use a noise machine, and he's, like, trying new things, and I made him use Headspace, and he loves it. People really swear by meditation and a noise machine for sleeping. I do. So, did you know that three weeks of Headspace can reduce your aggression, reactivity to negative feedback by 57%? Wow. I've only been doing it for, like, two weeks, wow. but maybe in one week I'll be a lot nicer, and Nick Vile won't want to yell at me. Maybe. Maybe. Hopefully he used Headspace on his way over here. Headspace has hundreds of meditation sessions on everything from stress to sleep. Start your journey towards a healthier, happier life by subscribing to Headspace. Sign up now at headspace.com slash toast to get a free month trial. Sign up online at headspace.com slash toast for a free month's trial. Start meditating today. Exciting. Yeah. Okay. 
Story number one. Jesse Smollett is under arrest for allegedly lying about the hate attack. Jesse Smollett, who we here on the Morning Toast I'm are sorry, calling I don't know Jesse Mussy Smollett, Smollett yeah. because he was very, very and mussy in, his, in staging his own hate crime. This is the thing. I've never staged a hate crime, <laughs> but I do have some tips if you're looking to do it. Do a lot better than Jesse did. Jesse, sorry. Mussy. Um, whatever. I really wish his name was Jesse. Just so when we made up our nickname, it could have been Messy. And like, that would have been a lot funnier because then people were like, what's Mussy? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Mussy block. Jackie, I was laughing about Mussy Smollett. All day Messy yesterday. Block. <laughs> yes. But so if you're going to stage your own hate crime, here's what I, I suggest. Definitely pay cash for the noose you're buying um, because then a receipt, literally a receipt will follow you around. I would say don't hang out and take pictures with the people who you're staging it with like a couple days before and then Maybe post it on public Instagram. find people like on Craigslist, but don't go on the internet, but find randoms. Yeah. Who are like, you know, that movie, Two Strangers on a Train. What's that movie called? I never heard I of it. I think it's called two, something, Two Girl Strangers. on a Train? Two Strangers on a Train. And train they wreck? each commit the crime for the other person. But the only way they knew each other is because they sat on the train together every morning, but their lives were completely separate. One killed one's wife, one killed the other wife. And then they finally realized they knew each other from riding the train together every morning. Have you ever morning. seen the movie Sliding Doors? No. Me neither. But in my communications class, someone referenced it. And I always think about it. And I feel like I saw the movie. It's basically like Gwyneth Paltrow, close personal friend of mine. Um, she gets on a train, and the movie is like dual lives. What would have happened if she missed this train, or if she took and she took the next one, and like she got a haircut, so you know when it's like the old one and the new one, and it's so crazy. I think she like dies in wow. one of them. Wow, is that crazy? I that love movies crazy. that like mess with your brain, like Shutter Island. That's how we start. We gotta get back on Toast Movie of the Week. Maybe Sliding Doors and Two Strangers on a yeah, Train. Yeah, I actually wanna see Sliding Doors. And there was weirdly a master post about it in one of the, the Toast groups a little while ago, and people were like acting like it's a movie that changed their lives. So, like, okay. maybe my life needs to be changed. Let's get back to Toast Movie of the Week next week. I have too much on my plate this and week. And I never did the last one, Sea Biscuit. Right. No, I think it was, <laughs> we, we was Secretary. We couldn't remember if we had assigned Sea Biscuit or Secretary because they're both one word in movies that start with S about horses. What right. are the odds? <laughs> what are the odds? It's like friends Almost and benefits. the odds of them winning. <laughs> totally. Muzzy Smollett, who has been charged with lying to cops when he claimed to be the victim of a racist and homophobic attack, turned himself in to Chicago police early Thursday. Loser. Jesse Smollett is under arrest and in custody of detectives who had earlier contacted the 36-year-old attorney to negotiate a reasonable surrender for his arrest, Chicago police spokesman Andy Guglielmi tweeted. The Empire actor was charged Wednesday with felony disorderly conduct for the allegedly false report he made January 29th, according to the Cook County State Attorney's Office. Okay, so like, I know that when you get arrested, it has to be like for a specific crime. I don't understand how staging your own hate crime is a disorderly conduct charge. Uh, I don't know, but filing a fake police report yeah, is for sure. the charge. But like, what about, you know, uh, um, fucking up the emotions of millions of Americans? That's like, what about that? That's, That's not, not a crime? crime. Okay, no. what, what, is this a crime? Being I thirsty on GMA with Robin Roberts, even though she knows you're fucking lying? Technically not a crime, but hmm. fraud is a crime. Yeah, in false... False impersonation of a hate crime, something? I don't know. There's Disorderly conduct. Like, that's what Snooki got when she got arrested on the beach. This is worse. Right. This is more than that. Actually, no, she got. By the way, that episode where Snooki gets arrested and then they're all at, back at home calling her parents, trying to remember what it is that she got arrested for and tell them. They couldn't remember. J. Wells, like, public intoxication of disorder. Like, <laughs> that's so funny. Like, they couldn't remember what she got arrested for. So funny. You no, know, if I ever get arrested, not go with it, that never happens, because I don't think I would survive in jail. Um, it would totally be for, like, drunk disorder, like, conduct, whatever it's called. Yeah, like... But so how could I get arrested for the same Luan thing as, as Mussey? No, I don't know. And then also, this is going now to a grand jury, so it's like, is he going to have to be proven? Oh, again, oh, our wholly reliable juror system, all these rural jurors just fucking it up. They can never get it right. I need to get on a jury. But I think, like, the most justice will be served, like, in the court of public opinion, you know, because this... He, Mussy is finished. He'll never work in this town again. Literally, even though he hasn't, Empire hasn't said anything about writing him off. Right. Well, that was going to be my next story because Empire producers are reportedly weighing whether to suspend Mussy Smollett. What's that is to weigh? So weird. Empire What's producer, to weigh? Not me. <laughs> Empire producers are reportedly weighing whether to suspend Mussy Smollett now that he's been charged with filing the false police report. <laughs> Sources close to the show told Variety on Wednesday night that Fox began mulling over a possible punishment for Smollett after his racist attack story was officially denounced by Chicago authorities. The network had been standing firmly behind the actor, issuing a statement earlier in the day that said he was still considered, quote, a consummate professional on set and wasn't being, quote, written out of the show, despite reports saying otherwise. One production source told Variety that Smollett was scheduled to be on the Chicago set of Empire this Thursday, today, the same day he's scheduled in court. But the producers are not planning on changing their shooting schedule. 
What? What? And you know what's weird is like the, everything started. Um, people were saying that Mussy staged this attack because he was being written off of Empire, so he wanted like you to, know, to his get his start arise. His start arise because how can now, how can you write off Mussy now? Everyone's turning into right. to watch Mussy. Right. So it's almost like the Empire producers don't want to prove that it's true that that was a possibility. Right. Is what then I'm sensing. Technically, like they could be like to blame, even though there's really only one person to blame. Yeah. It's like this wouldn't have happened if you weren't going to write him off. Right, so it's weird. It's just Hollywood is just always doing, doing the wrong, wrong thing. thing. But no, you're you're so right. Like I think I would prefer, in this case, like if I could only have one, I would prefer the court of public opinion to denounce Jesse than like him actually go to jail. Do you know what I mean? Right. Because like, if he goes to jail and then comes back as a hero, you know. Because also like the punishment fits the crime. It's like he only hurt himself. Technically. Yes. So it's like what he really did was sway public opinion, so he should be held up in the court of public opinion. Yeah. No, I just, I wonder why they're being so shady and not really saying anything in terms of him being on Empire. I don't know. What does he play on Empire, Margot? Do you watch? I used to. Um... He plays the son, one of the kids. I've seen a few episodes. You have? When I used to live with Olivia, it was always she on TV. She loves. That show really influenced her, like, and her style and, like, how she's, like, started acting. Yeah, she was not. She's cookie. Yeah, she's so cookie. <laughs> I love cookie, even though I don't even know her. I also just love cookies. Yeah. So I'm, I'll be interested. I was watching all these new, different news outlets yesterday, trying to see because when we covered the story, I've been, you know, I got married this weekend, so I've been kind of out of touch. So I was like, what? By I was way. like, how are people handling the story? It is so sensitive because yeah. on the one hand, if if he's not lying, and we even put out there that he's lying, like we're assholes. But if he is lying, like. We all look like assholes. What a loser. You know? So I just, I didn't know how other outlets were going to cover it. And everyone is in our, our same predicament. And so many people, like, refuse to say anything until the gauntlet has been thrown. And but the gauntlet has been thrown. No, this he morning he, he turned there himself in. Shot. There's a mug shot. There's a mussy mug shot. I absolutely love celebrity mug shots. Like, it is my favorite pastime. I collect them. Like, we should open a museum. Yeah. Which is, like, blown up celebrity. Head. And I feel like there's a lot of celebrities who, like, in their days ha have been arrested for one thing or another. And, like, you don't really think of them as, like, criminals. Like, obviously, when you think celebrity mugshot, you think, like, Lindsay Lohan. Right. But, I don't know, I think we need to open a gallery. No, there are some people who have just been, like, evacuated by hotel security and they got their picture taken in the basement. Right. Mugshot. Or, like, um, someone, like, you know, getting arrested for Greenpeace or whatever, you know, like, protesting. I'm getting a news notification. Mussy Smollett allegedly paid... $3,500 to stage the attack because he was unhappy with his salary, say the police. So you're know. unhappy with your salary, you're giving away $3,500? I don't get it. This is from People. Empire actor Jesse Smollett allegedly paid $3,500 to stage a bogus, a bogus hate crime against him because he was dissatisfied with his salary. Chicago Police Superintendent. Check it. Are you Melanie Bromley? Uh, Melanie Bromley. <laughs> if any of you guys watched Daily Pop yesterday, Melanie Bromley fumbled through the teleprompter and, like, and they brought her on to read the teleprompter. And I was like, what? <laughs> And now it's contagious. <laughs> Teleprompter floods are contagious. <laughs> That's literally what I was just thinking. The Chicago Police Superintendent Eddie Johnson said at a Thursday press conference. That's what I get for making fun of her. Smollett 36 was charged with filing, filing a false police report about his alleged hate attack on Wednesday. So I guess he thought if this happened to him, his star would rise. If he ever tried to walk away from the show, they would pay him more. I mean, like, I just feel like there's other ways <laughs> to go about raising your right. salary. I mean, they literally have, like, they, they have uh, motivational videos of, like, what you do, like, to go to your boss and oh. ask. You do a power pose in the bathroom. Please. Those I, secret I, I used to watch all of those videos. I power pose before my shows. I used to power pose in the bathroom and then, like, can I get some time on your calendar? Yeah. No, and then, like, no, you used to practice, rehearse, and then do none of it. Right. <laughs> and then be like, you know what? You're right. Let's dock my salary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not giving it my all. Let's dock my salary for wasting <laughs> your time. <laughs> so, anyways, Mussy, like, there were definitely other ways to go about it. You know, he could have been in, like, a thirsty Instagram relationship. No, like, I mean, this There is are other just... ways to get your starter eyes. This is extreme. I can't. I can't, just take a note out of the Nick and Priyanka book. Like, just get married. I can't, I can't personify, I can't conclude this story. Like, this story, when I hear this story, I think of one word. Loser! Loser! Get a life! Who has time to stage a hate crime? I'm too hungover. Someone made a really fair point, Katie Pastore. <laughs> I miss Claudia reading the stories. The ridicule was more balanced. I never read the stories. Yes, you did back in the day when we had a teleprompter. You used to read the stories. Oh, my God. My eyesight is so and bad. And we could both make fun of each other. Now it's just all on me, and it's hurtful. Oh, by the way, that is so true. Like, I never read. Right. Do you even know how? Unclear. 
Tiki watched you in New Jersey last night. Oh my God, Jackie, I literally was about to be like, speaking of people who can't read. We have to talk about it. I know. Well, okay, we'll recap it before Nick Vile because it was crazy and I did watch The Bachelor and there was still no fence, so there's nothing to recap. Until there's a fence, I'm not interested. Until there's a fence, I'm on the fence, honestly. Right. Khloe Kardashian breaks her silence on Jordan Woods, Tristan cheating scandal. Okay. Since yesterday, it has been 99.9% confirmed that this did happen. Kim unfollowed. Kim both unfollowed of both of them. Chloe posted some majorly emo quote cards on her Instagram story this morning saying that a betrayal is so much more painful when the person who betrayed you is the person you explained your pain to. Adrian Bailon said it was confirmed on her talk show and we know she has closed Kardashian sources and she said she spoke to her sources and it is confirmed. She didn't leave a shadow of a doubt. Morgan Stewart on Daily Pop said that she had spoken to Chloe and she promised to drag Jordan on the show, meaning that Chloe endorsed a dragging of Jordan. Oh my God, I'm shook. Wait, Morgan knows Chloe? I'm jealous. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah. So this really happened. And now what I'm thinking is it's worse than what we thought because we thought that they were possibly in love and they're going to run away together. No, and, we didn't think that. We, we said it's that's the, the only, only way logical. That, it's the only way that this could, like, for her to have done this. But what it seems like is, like, a sloppy party makeout, dance floor makeout session that people saw in public and they just, like, were sloppy and stupid and mussy. They were fucking mussy as hell. That, no, everyone's being mussy as fuck this week and they have to get their stuff together and clean the fuck up. But that's what I was saying yesterday. Like, if all of this was just, like, a drunk mistake, like, her whole life, like, job, car, salary, family, everything fell apart just for one drunk mistake. And I don't even know that they had sex. I, they might have just been making, making out. out. Wow. Horrifying. Wow, Jordan, just wow. Chloe Kardashian has broken her silence about Tristan Thompson cheating on her with Jordan Woods. Taking to her Instagram story, Chloe posted not so cryptic quotations that were unmistakably directed at Kylie Jenner's best friend and her now ex boyfriend. Quote, the worst pain is getting hurt by a person you explained your hurt to. Damn. It appears the E reality star might be grateful for Woods and Thompson's actions. As she then posted, somebody needs to hear this, that betrayal was your blessing. Her final quotes seemed to be a direct jab at her unfaithful ex. If they ask you about me, tell them she was the only person that loved me with honesty, and I broke her. The she is, like, so emotional and so sad. And I just have to say, like, she has horrible taste in men. She has got to stop dating she also, athletes. All they do is break her heart. horrible luck. She is another one who <clears throat> needs a businessman beau. She should be dating that kid from Yes to Key. Ben? Yes. Totally. <laughs> they can buy a million-dollar house with, with a... With a tiki bar. No, what's that thing called with a P? A palapa? Yeah. Is that what they're called? Yeah. A palapo. A palapo. Palapo, yeah. Uh, just have, you know, tikis, buy the tiki, and have a kiki riki, okay? Yeah. She she needs to meet new people. Do you know what a kiki riki she is? She should get on J-Swipe, you know, like, she totally. needs a nice, a nice what, Jewish What are boy. the good dating apps? Like, what, what are, Margo? Oh, I mostly. She's, Margo was like our guinea pig 18-year-old, like we ask her. Homegirl knows nothing about nothing. dating. And she's 21. Like, if you are of age and have a penis, like, please. Up, Let us know. But my my number one recommendation for dating apps is Hinge. Yeah, I think so too. This and isn't then, sponsored. I'm genuinely just curious. No, yeah, that's Zach and I like met a little bit on Hinge. Hinge plus work, but we had matched on Hinge, which let us both know that we were both single and straight. You know, that's where it's helpful. Just like making clear like labels for people, even though you're not supposed to label. But like, what are you going to waste your time on someone like who's married? Right. Or like, yeah. Or or not even looking, like not even on dating. I'm not interested. Right. Or gay. Right. Terrible. Exactly. Annoying. Okay. Oh my god, wait, there was actually sorry, never mind. I changed my mind. I don't want to show the story. Um, next story, just in you know, this series of stories is that Kim Kardashian has officially unfollowed Jordy Mullitz and Tristan Thompson amid cheating allegations. And whoever discovered this did it the right way. I can't with everyone in their fake outs. Like, she unfollowed. No, I spoke about this yesterday. There's a way to check if someone still follows them, and it doesn't include searching their followers, it includes searching their following. I mean, you can always count on Kim to be the toughest. On her yeah. sister's cheating men. I'm just like, I'm thinking of Kylie in this dark time. Only Kylie. She must be devastated. And you know what's crazier? Because, okay, so it wasn't an affair that they were having. They're not in love. They're not running away together. It was a stupid dance floor makeout that, like, I'm sure Jordan feels awful about. And, like, I don't know if Kylie will forgive her or ever could forgive her, but it's like she has the option to forgive her, you know? But can she? Hollywood Unlocked just announced that Jordan and Tristan Thompson have been involved for over a month. Comes reporter from the field directly, snitch you guys, counselor. What the fuck? 
fuck is Hollywood Unlocked? And when did it become Associated Press? Okay, I saw something about Hollywood Unlocked, but the person who runs it, I guess it's just like- Is friends with the Kardashians. You know, some random morning show. It's friends with the Kardashians. Not, not, not as random as this Okay, one. honestly, I'm relieved that they've been involved for over a month for her sake, because if it was just a mistake, like she would be begging for forgiveness for the rest of her life. But you know what, now, and you know, Maybe she didn't know what she was doing, but she knew what she was doing, and she made her bed, and now she's going to sleep in it, and it's not. And it's not going to be alone. House. And it's not going to be alone. And it's not going to be on a Kardashian property. So maybe they are in love. Okay, that's still a possibility. Wow. So it's not in Calabasas. Okay. Did now, you see Hotels.com? Now this is. Did you see Hotels.com? No. Being shady as fuck on Twitter. If you're looking for a hotel in the Calabasas area, they put up a link to all the Calabasas hotels. For Jordan. Yeah. That's nice. Funny. I hope I she love saw when it. brands have humor. But she wouldn't have even seen it because Chris. Cut off her phone service. Right, you know, they took her phone away. Right, everyone's like, why is Jordan so silent? It's because she can't get to us yet. Her phone plan has to She got to start a new plan. She got to go over to Sprint, you know, open yeah, up a new plan. Maybe line cricket that. wireless for her. Yeah, <laughs> tough times. She did just lose. Oh my God. And have you seen the comments people are leaving on the Kylie X Jordan collab on KylieCosmetics.com? You can review the product. Like, where this tiny prom, it was amazing, didn't stick. They're like, Perfect for a night out of doing shady things with your best friend's sister's boyfriend. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, like, the internet is really, sh the internet can be a terrible place, but in moments like this, like, the creativity is just. Yeah, it knows no bounds. And I'm loving all the makeup. Okay, because honestly, when I thought it was just a, a <clears throat> make out, I thought that Kylie might forgive her. Like, because it, you maybe could, but this is unforgivable, and I'm glad. But I'm sad for Kylie. But now yeah. she knows the kind, like, Jordan really is, like, fucked up big. She, like, didn't just make a mistake. She I can't. made a mistake. I just months. will never be able to wrap my head months. around why. It's like I'm just as confused about this, like why some why why Jordan would do this, just as confused as I am as like why Jesse would sorry, Mussy would do that. Like I'm just as perplexed by what's the motivation. What's more shocking? No, it's not what's more shocking. What's more difficult to understand? Like what's less relatable? Like have like literally biting the hand that feeds you or staging a hate crime. Still the Mussy thing wins, but still. But still, this is a close second. Yeah. Big time. Craziness. Big mis you know what this is? It's a big mistake. Huge. The biggest. Okay, next story. I need to go grocery shopping. In a little morning show host news, I mean, same. I've been eating, um, like, all this, like, expensive chocolates that were sent to my hotel room during my wedding. Oh, that's like, nice. No, but it's, like, all these ones with, like, strawberry filling. Wait, by the way, all the ones, did you, um, did you see the flowers or the candy from Ali Mahajra? Yes, that's what I've been eating. Oh, okay. Um, I never know if you got it, because, like, I opened I the did. door and, like, you know, I didn't tell you. Um, no, last night I got home, like, drunk, so hungry, and all there was was, like, skinny pop. I need to just start ordering food, but, like, I don't want this crap in my body, you know? You don't? Do you ever use Thrive Marketplace? I actually learned about it on Instagram from, I think, Amanda Stanton. Yeah, I've seen, they do. They work with influencers. And yeah. Here and, we are. And, and now they are. Well, they basically send groceries straight to your door, but it's all, like, good shit. Like, they have, they have kosher stuff. They have paleo. They have keto. You could, like, shop categorically. Like, Ben would be, like, checking all the boxes. Like, keto, kosher. Oh, wow. Yeah. Keto, kosher. That leaves, like, two things. Yeah. But that sounds so good. So it's an online marketplace uh, with a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. You can buy brands you trust for 25 to 50% off traditional retail prices. You can shop for non-GMO food, snacks, vitamins, supplements, personal care products, eco-friendly cleaning supplies, safe and non-toxic beauty products, and so much more. You can filter by values like vegan, kosher, ketogenic, gluten-free, make healthier choices even if you don't follow a strict diet. We have an offer for the toasters. You can get 25% off your first order and a free 30-day trial. So their prices are already 25 to 50% off, and then they're giving you another 25% off. Um, thrivemarket.com slash toast. No code necessary. The discount is automatically applied to checkout. Um, thrivemarket.com slash toast. I'm going to use the code, actually. I'm going to do that, but next week, because I'm still eating like my way I was gonna back say, to life. Are you, like, you were on this wedding diet. How, many, how, is, how long is the cheat week month um, going to be? I think it'll, it'll go through the weekend. I can't just, like, one day wake up and decide to be good again. But also, I feel like I haven't been fulfilled, you know? I need yeah. to go out to a delicious meal. That was my big plan. You know what? Maybe I'll do that. Ugh. But I, then I have to go out. Right. That's the hard part about going right. out. Coming is, here is, is, the, is the going out part. Right. So we'll see. Yeah, TBD. coming to work is hard enough. But when I get back on it, which I'm going to do, and like I think I want to kind of stay in good shape, like at least have like one good summer. You know, I know Carol has 20, but yeah. I just want one. She only has five. I just want one. Um, oh, right. She, he has 20. Yeah. She has five. I just and want by one. my calculations, I think last, one, last summer was her last one. Right. We'll see this summer. Maybe she got a bonus one. Yeah. Okay. Next story in a little. Um, Daytime talk show host, in little host news, Wendy Williams announces return to her show after more than two month hiatus. It's been two months. It's been so long. Wendy Williams is returning to TV. Williams has been on hiatus from the Wendy Williams show since December, but will finally return to host on March 4th. 
Wendy Williams is an incredible talent with the most unique voice in daytime, the show's production company, Debmar Mercury, said in a statement on Thursday. We can't wait to welcome her back to her iconic purple chair on the set of her show. The statement continued. We so appreciate all the guest hosts and panelists who filled in for Wendy during this time. These people are and will always be true family to the show, and we want to thank all of the loyal and supportive fans who have been with us for 10 years now. Williams took a hiatus from her morning show to treat her Graves' disease. She was hospitalized, long hospitalized long-term, but then was spotted out with a friend at CVS in Florida. Rumors about her husband's alleged infidelity right. and abuse began to swirl as her absence continued. While she was taking care of herself, Nick Cannon, Michael Rappaport, Jerry O'Connell, and more guests filled in for her as hosts. I mean, this story is just, it's so weird, but I'm more so, you know, insulted that we weren't asked to host. I found my lip gloss. It's where, been where? in my sweater the whole time. Can I use it? What is it? Is it it's a Kopari? Lun uh, no, I wish. It's Luna Aster. I think it's like Blue Mercury's own brand. It's cute. It is cute. I'll take some. I wore it at my wedding. Did you? You know what's crazy? I wore Kylie Cosmetics at my wedding. Tell her. Passion, the lipstick. That's the color I was wearing. It's, I'm wearing it now, too. It's I wore great. NYX. Wow. NYX. I mean, everyone's always yelling at me for how to pronounce that. What do you say? N I guess the NYX. It depends what I say the NYX Wonder Stick, but I, if I'm... I oh, really? Know. I say the NYX. Would you still use the NYX mm -hmm. Wonder Stick? I only use the contour side, though. Yeah. I don't use the contour stick anymore, either. The highlight stick? No, I don't use the, the dark part. I don't contour oh, wait, with only, cream anymore. Oh, that's all I do. Oh, really? But some days I forget. I don't know why. It's like the first step I forget. Anyways, back to Wendy Williams. She's back. She's back. I'm so in the dark and confused as to what's going on. I know there's a lot of rumors swirling, but I haven't really been keeping up on it because I've been like planning a wedding. So um, do you want to fill me in? Um, yeah. So she, she does have Graves' disease. Her husband is notoriously um, disloyal. Uh, they have a toxic relationship. She fainted on stage, and that's all I know. Right, so then she took some time off, and then there was just, like... I can't get over how incredibly fucked up it is that her fainting is, like, one of the most used GIFs on the internet. GIFs. Is it? I don't yes. see it that often. Oh, my God, I see it all over Twitter. That was crazy. That was crazy. That's, like, my worst nightmare. Like, every time I have to, like, fart, I have to run off. So when she comes back, like, what do you think? She... I guess she'll probably just... Is she going to address it? I mean, I'm sure she will, but I don't think you'll get any sort of tea that you're looking for. No, me neither. And that's annoying, because I'm always looking for tea. Right. I'm and constantly like on the search for a glass of chamomile tea. She appreciates good tea, so... Yeah, she I actually really know. like her show. Me too. I mean, I'll obviously never forgive her for what she did to Rachel Lindsay, and I'm still, like, really mad about it, but I think that she has good takes on celebrity culture, and she doesn't let her relationships with certain celebrities influence what she talks about and like how she speaks about it. Um, and I like her show and if it's, if it's on and I'm home and there's nothing else on, I'll watch it. So I'm excited for her to be back, I guess. Yeah. Even though she's technically our competition. No, but she, it's, uh, she's daytime though. You know, she's much later in the day. And let's be real, there's no competition with the morning toast. Okay, we're in a final of our story, own. which will also segue us into Real Housewives of New Jersey reading and recap. Daniel Staub and Marty Caffrey to finalize divorce in court. The marriage of Real Housewives of New Jersey semi-star Danielle Staub and Marty Caffrey will be finally over on Thursday, page six is learned. We're told the pair are expected to appear before a judge in a Bergen County courtroom at 9 a.m. to end their dismal 10-month union. We're told the split is uncontested and they anticipate that the appearance will last less than an hour. A source who's seen the divorce documents tell us that as part of the agreement, Staub will have to either buy the two point one five million dollar house that they have been living in together or move out by April. Sure. She'll also have to cough up for the furniture inside it. If the house is sold, Caffrey will have to move out immediately, but until it sells, he's going to continue to live there. Shook. Wow. Staub also has to repay all her debts to Caffrey, and she has to return all their wedding presents. Caffrey's never had any of them, we're told. She has to return them to the store? Or to him. But that's not fair. They're both of their presents. And they were both married. They should split them 50-50. Yeah. Caffrey told Page Six, now that my divorce will be final, I feel great relief as well as sadness. I bear Danielle no ill will, and I wish her the best in everything she does. He's previously blamed the end of their marriage on the Bravo show. The pair married in May and announced that they were splitting in August. I think that Marty and Joe and Margaret are actually friends now. Yeah, that's what, um, that's what I was getting from when they all came on the show, that Marty was actually at one point living with Margaret and Joe. Right. And then Danielle and Teresa was like That's what Teresa shape. said. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think he's a good guy who was under a spell, much like Teresa's. Okay, let's talk about the reunion, because all I could think was, what is going on with Teresa? She was being, like, a spoiled child, and it's, like, the same Danielle that was in her ear, no one tells Teresa Judice what to do, spoke to her before the reunion and said, this is the Teresa Judice Gave Jude. her a pep talk. This is the Teresa Judice show. Nobody yeah. talks to you and stays on the show, and then she literally just blurted that same thing out. Well, I'm really struggling, especially because the whole episode was really Teresa versus Jackie, and... When I look at it from a third party perspective completely with no, it, Teresa's wrong, like whatever. But I just can't get behind Jackie. Like there's something so inauthentic about her and I just, I'm, I'm not with it yet. I just, I, 
I, it's not that I can't get behind Jackie. Like, I don't think she's like a lovable character, but she is so rational and right. And Teresa is so wrong. It's, it's crazy. And, and I like that someone's, like, yes, everybody does feel that way, though. Like, you can't cross Teresa because, like, she went to jail, so the show is hers somehow. But I like that Jackie doesn't care. Like, Jackie would rather say her truth than be on next season. Yeah. And you know what? I think she will be on next season. Me too. I think they're both returning. So Teresa's wrong. Like, yeah. and Teresa can't feel like just because, you know, by the way, it's like she went to jail, so the show was hers, but, like, you guys committed a crime. Like, why is that a, a, no, you, a good thing? So, you know, like, why is that, right. like, something to be, like, proud of that now you have a show right. because of it? So, and Teresa shouldn't feel like no one can cross her. Like, because then she never has to be held accountable. Then she can do and say whatever she wants and doesn't have to worry that people are going to come for her. Yeah. I mean, she was saying some, some weird shit when Jackie was like, all right, so if I'm back next season, I won. And then Teresa's like, no. Oh, my God. When Teresa was like, are you hungry? Right after she just talked about her experience with an eating disorder. Like, oh, my God. And I'm like, this, she did, I said, she did not just say that. Like, what? And then, thank God, Jennifer stepped in and was like, I think you mean thirsty. And I do think she did mean thirsty. I don't think she, she really meant to say that. But, but like, her uh, ignorance was, not was bliss. offensive. Was not bliss. It was not bliss. Terrible. And then when she started to call Jackie a stalker because she went to one meet and greet, and Jackie is so fucking smart, she goes, oh, so that's what you think about all the people oh who my, come to your meet Jackie. and greets? Jackie. Like, honestly, that's what you get for having, like, a smart lawyer on the show. By the way, the only moment where Jackie was visibly, like, gotten to and, like, enraged was when they brought up the picture. Like, I But she knew it was going to be brought up. So, like, she was prepared. And then when she flipped it like that, I was like, wow, this bitch is smart. No, that was some law and order type shit. It like, was crazy. Oh, so you think all the people who come to Mean Greets are losers? Right, and when she was like, there were four people in line, like, she really turned the whole thing around. That was mean. Something that, that could have been so... I mean, that was the days of, uh, what's her, what was her cookbook called? Fabulicious. Fabulicious. Like, there was definitely a line around the block. I firmly right, no, believe. No, no, but she was just a savage, and she knew it was going to come up. She knew that Teresa was going to, like, make her feel like a loser about it, and she just flipped it around, and I have the utmost respect for her. Yeah, no, she, she really Especially because like Teresa was not helping herself. And I love Teresa, and, like, you know, she is the OG of the NJ. Yeah. But um, she's completely wrong. She's acting like like a petulant child. No, she really is. And it's, it's, no, it's no one's show. Like, really, you think it's your show? Any, Lisa Vanderpump is on her way out of Beverly Hills. You're not safe in Jersey. No, nobody is safe. Vicki Gumbelson, I think, was demoted to Friend of Housewife. Lisa Vanderpump has her own show on Bravo, and she's n- going to be out of Beverly Hills. Did no you hear the rumor safe. that they're going to do another show because she's opening a pump in Vegas? And they're going to do another pump rolls. Great. And you know what? And I don't think it would be as successful. Because I think either. there's something. The, ma- the secret magic sauce about the Underpump rules isn't the, the format. It's the history. And it's the group of friends. They just stumbled onto a gold mine. If they start doing a show in Vegas, you're never going to find a group of friends that knows each other That also works years. at a restaurant that just opened but has to have worked there for five years. And it's in Vegas. Like, yeah. It'll be Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club. Then she's co- Lindsay Lohan copied her. Now she's copying Lindsay. Totally. So I hope she does that because I would love to see her fail. Jackie, um, that is not nice. Wh- what else happened at the reunion? Melissa was very quiet, but there's definitely something uh, exploding. The thing with the family loyalty that Teresa kind of demands, it's like, in, in an argument that has nothing to do with Melissa, why why Teresa demands that Melissa just like take her side? Wait, by the way, it's an argument that has everything to do with Teresa because Teresa I'm is sorry, going not in Teresa, on Melissa. I'm sorry, not Teresa, Melissa. Right, Teresa is going in on Melissa. Like, the argument had everything to do with, with Melissa because Teresa's yelling at Melissa, Jackie backs at Melissa, and then Teresa expects Melissa to defend right. Teresa. Right, it's like Pythagorean theorem. It's, like, it's illogical. Yeah, no, I mean... And then when Teresa... I have like, compassion. And Teresa's just such a Jackie. hypocrite. It's like, she doesn't even... She's so, she's so not accountable for the things that she says and does that she doesn't even think about, okay, I'm going to say this about someone. Let me just check my own backyard. Yes. You don't speak to your sister. For years, you didn't speak to your brother and your, and your sister-in-law. I have compassion. <laughs> that was really sad. It was, but, like... And... It's like, she doesn't... She... She thinks she, she can just be, like, be wrong and say the wrong things and it doesn't matter. But, like, it does. And I have compassion. I do. T- like, I just feel like for a while, Teresa could get really get away with anything because of what she was going through and people were going to be interested. Yeah. But now it's like... Th- that no longer applies. The, the chips have fallen where they may. And now Let you need chips. to, like, be a, oh. a housewife, a part of the team. It's not the Teresa show. Go get your own show if you no, want you put No, like you put that. the show on your back and, like, your family drama really took the show through some tough times, the twins, Amber Marchese of it all. But now the show has legs and it's no longer, con- like the success of the show is no longer contingent on your, uh, you and your husband's felonies. So you got to bring something else to the table. Yeah. and it, it, Maybe throw a wine glass. I don't know. No. Or just some like rational 
Thinking. Thinking, yeah. Um, I know, like, when I get past this hangover, I'm going to have the biggest migraine. I'm sorry. You're a migraine sister, too, now. I, I know, but I haven't had one since I've been married. I really think a lot of my migraines were over the stress. Oh, you think? Oh, yeah, I, and I knew it at the time. Um, so we'll see how I fare. Anyone who's had a migraine knows that they're the absolute worst. They really are, like, they crippling, really are. cripplingly painful. Not even painful, cripplingly, like, dizzying. Debilitating. You just can't get out of bed. Any time I would stand up... Now, it's a little easier to treat your migraine from the comfort of your own home, thank God, thanks to Cove. Get treatment from home. So Cove starts out with a simple consultation by a licensed physician, and then the prescription that they determine is best for you is sent directly to your door. It's personalized. After your consultation, your doctor creates and tailors your individual course of treatment. Cove then reaches out a few weeks after seeing how you're feeling. They break down everything you need to know about migraines, migraine treatment, a doctor who's licensed to practice medicine in your state will be the one who prescribes your monthly medication and oversees your progress. I mean, I just need this, and the fact that you don't have to leave your house, like, ideal. If you suffer from migraines, the last thing you need to have is to wait to see your doctor. With Cove, there's finally a way to get help you need when you need it. When you use our special link, you'll get first month of treatment for free. Go with cove.com slash toast, with Cove, W-I-T-H-C-O-V-E dot com slash toast. Check it out. Okay. That's really so helpful. I'm now like, I'm almost looking forward to my next migraines, stop. but I'm not. Don't, so don't wish it. Knock on wood. Jackie, I'm like so nervous because we have to bring Nick Vile out now. I right? know. What other shows we're on? Just Jackie's trying to stall. No. So New Jersey, I'm really looking forward to the rest of me the Me too. And something big is brewing. And just last night's episode upset me because I just, I didn't, I always will stand Teresa, and I just I thought she was really phoning it in and, and just saying this is the Teresa show. I I can say and do what I want, and I'm not going to be held accountable. But you know what? We'll get Teddy Mellencamp in there. You will be held accountable tomorrow. I mean, next week I believe is when she announces that she has a boyfriend. When we saw pictures of him last night, he's Jewish and he's 26. What? And on his LinkedIn, I think it says um, aspiring entrepreneur. Stop. Stop. Which oh is code God. for unemployed. Um, okay, we're going to take a quick break. We are going to eat our shit put our foots in our mouths, and meet Nick Vile. I'm, like, so nervous to meet him, like, off camera. Right. right. <laughs> I okay. want to die. Okay. So, um, yeah. See we'll ya. be back in, like, two minutes. If you have a question, feel free to leave it on the YouTube stream. And just pray for us because I'm nervous and I have diarrhea. Bye.
Welcome back to the newest episode of Eating Shit with Jackie and Claudia. <laughs> we are here with someone who, you know, we have just, I think... We've been hard on. We've been, we've been on, very we've hard, hard on you. And I'm really excited. More than I even realized. Yes, yep, I'm mean, sure. We, I'm, maybe yeah. you didn't even realize when we came up on your podcast... Um, you just said that we didn't so like let us, you. So let's start from the We're beginning. We're going to start from the beginning because yeah. we owe you an let's, apology. Let's get into it. This yeah. is uh, The Morning Apology with Jackie and Claudia. We, we tried to trace back how we started to just like be hard on you. Yeah, what happened? It's our job to, you know, like poke fun and The Bachelor is one of the things. Okay. The and, Bachelor is right for it. And we had we knew you vaguely from Andy's season, but, but that was before we watched. Yeah, we didn't watch Andy's season. You and, didn't watch Andy's season? No. Mm -mm. I watched well, it. I just assumed it was from Andy's season. Well, well it, that, that was that moment that had gone viral, like that's the only thing we knew you from. So we're right. like, oh, Nick, the villain. Right. Why sure. is he asking her on Men, Men to Women Tell All? That's why personal criticism. questions, yeah. right? So then we, I started watching Chris Soul season, then Caitlyn season. You came on, and in my head, you're just like, "Oh, this villainous guy." And we were Sean B. Caitlyn yeah. Stan. We were you like, know? "Here, we still are." We took sides. But. So we took we sides, did. but it was just you know a normal thing. Then totally normal. It, you know, just <laughs> just like a normal like, oh, I, I, I'm rooting for Sean. Uh -huh. Not right. it wasn't. We weren't so passionate about it yet. Then you went on Paradise, right? From yeah. there, you went on Paradise, and, and yet, Jen. And we shipped you and Jen. Hardcore. And we were like, oh, you know what? Maybe he's not a bad guy. Right. But because... He I, left her high and dry in the beach. I feel like she's doing fine. She is doing fine. Right. But in that moment, we were like, oh, this is his happy ending. He's not a villain anymore. And then you just like left her to become and, The Bachelor. Right. And then you became The Bachelor. and like, The Bachelor. What was the timeline? What do you mean? Of when you broke up with Jen and then when they asked you to be The Bachelor. Well, I broke up with her in paradise. Uh-huh. Okay. And then they asked me like two months later. Two months? Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, They fine. made it seem a little quicker than that. For uh, us, it just felt like well, you guys were in paradise. Well, because you watched it. Right. <laughs> right. No, they announced you as The Bachelor before you broke up before, with her in paradise. Yeah. So they kind of put this in our heads. Like, totally. Oh, broke and we really did think Ugh. you guys were a great couple. The show screwed me. And totally. then we had also, I mean, in hindsight, this is hilarious. We wanted like Luke and Chase no, to I wanted to the Chase Bachelor. to be The Bachelor. And then they're like, Nick, I'm like, what? How do you still feel about that now? We do you feel, follow him on Instagram? Yeah, oh, big time. We feel, and? We feel as if, you know, you, the right decision was made. But we didn't know it at the time. Do you enjoy those ass pictures? I do, actually. Hayes is taking? Yes. No, I mean, we were we were really um, saved with, with we, Robbie we Hayes. Were, and we didn't know it at the time, but, you know, we just know what they're giving us, and it's like, okay, so you're it. this villainous person. You and what's that thing they say about hindsight? It's 2020. It's 2020. 2020. So, yeah, and then you ended up uh -huh. with Vanessa, who, like, we had known, for, for, like, as, you know, she the was villain. kind of the villain of her season. She fought with Rachel and Bimini, even though they didn't air it, and we were like... These two people. Right. So, anyways, then we just went in and we took it a little far, and then we we know and we came up on like your a show. Joke. Right. But then, and so we never even spoke to you or met you. We were just like jokingly like hating you. And then Rachel Lindsay, who is a friend of the toast, went on your show, and it's your show, so like you can say whatever you want. And she brought us up, and you were like, "Oh, those girls don't like me." And like you could have taken it as an opportunity to just like slam, slam us. us. Like there's so much to be said about us, and you did it. And I was like, "Oh." So all I have to do is not talk shit? Yeah. I no, swear. It, it was just yes, like, yeah. please do. Okay. It was like, oh, a moment where we were like, maybe he's not a bad guy. Like, because if that was me and someone was talking shit and I got my own show and I'm starting to just, you, you know. You just would have gone ham? Oh, just. big time. But you didn't. And like, mm -hmm. if you had gone ham, there would have been so many people being like, yeah, those girls suck. But you didn't do it. So I was like, it was maybe a real moment of growth for us. Maybe Killing there's kindness, more. You know? Right. Maybe, maybe you didn't get more. the opportunity to talk shit, but we really, we, we grew up in that moment. I yeah. thought, I mean, you're like, to your point, I mean, I guess I could have spent, it's my show. I yeah, I right. Um, I didn't know you guys, I mean, I, I, I clearly have realized you guys have a very popular show. Uh, by the way, my, my cousin's uh, girlfriend, Mary, is very excited. So hey, hard. Mary. Hey, Mary. Um, I didn't know you existed until I think it was you sort of trolling me on my Instagram. I don't even know. And I was like, you know, like you got the blue check mark because it kind of oh, pops. Oh, yeah, right. And so I don't know, remember what you said, but I was like, because usually trolls are, you know, there's no posts. They have right. like zero They're followers. Anonymous. You know, this like weird cat meme. Right, and right, like, right. Bible verse in their yeah, bio. Def 100%. Always. Like, but I'm Jewish. Like, yeah. Um, and then I was like, well, why is this? And then I kept looking and like, why is this person really well, not like me well, and it just then i did some deep digging and it was i'm sorry it, this was, is it. it was a lot you know it's it's part of my job to just like be funny and, and poke fun but i took it too far i apologize for trolling Sorry. you i apologize for what today. i've said I mean, and we're no, here thank today. you for coming first of all we love it it's everyone's like excited a that you're here of like wrestling when the when right. they would fight mm -hmm. and they would tag team up this is wwe ross SummerSlam. So, basically yes so it's winter slam so do you accept our apology yeah, sure. Okay, Great. thanks Long for being cool. Ago, yeah. Well, oh, I love him. Okay, <laughs> so now that we get to interview you like I mean, regular, if I took things personally, <laughs> right. then well, so you, where, you would I, where would I be? From people of the Bachelor franchise, you, you kind of have gone the farthest, I would say, just in terms of career afterwards. 
Thanks. Yeah. So, um, are you dating January Jones? Like, were you ever? Huh. No. I mean, she's a friend. You guys make out? Like, you know. I mean, hey, I've learned my lesson. Right. You are, you're the one who said what? You're, you, you shamed him for saying for talking publicly to Andy. Okay, and I, I guess that's true. Him. I guess that's true. Thank you. Thanks. But on my show, tell us everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so you have a new podcast called The Vile Files, which Great is name. such a good name. Love it. Really? Uh, yes. Thank you. I give, I give credit to my acting coach slash producer for coming up with that. I wasn't sure about it, but. How many? How much uh, of your online trolls make fun of the fact that your last name is Vile? It's Vial. Oh. Vial. But no one can get it right. It's a big thing. My mom's maiden name is Parker. Mm -hmm. and, oh, God, I wish. Nick you know. Parker from I know. Pan like Trap. A, yes. That's I, the dad's I, name. It could have been like a superhero name. And yes. now it's like, you know, if we get married, it's fine. You don't have to take it. No, <laughs> Nick um, Parker's a great name. Vial. Vial. It's okay. supposed to be French. It was supposed to be like D.V. Talis and somewhere like, you know, in, in, in Long, you know, Staten Island. Mm -hmm. Ellis Island. They... Ellis Island or whatever. You know, <laughs> someone got lazy and just like butched it up and here I am. <laughs> I like um, it. Vial. Very all. different. Very different. Um, we, How are you liking the podcast life? Oh, yeah. I enjoy it. Um, it's fun. I, I try to, you know, we talk a little bit Bachelor. I, I really, honestly, it's not meant to be a Bachelor podcast. Mm -hmm. I, from time to time, I'll have people on, like Rachel. Rachel's mm -hmm. a good friend. She's cool. And I'll give the people what they want. But ultimately, like, I, I like talking. I do like a lot, a lot of relationship stuff. I like talking about other people's opinions. I tend to have uh, people on it necessarily. I don't like, I don't... Typically, uh, I don't think it's that much fun to talk to people who always agree with me. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's fun to have people who have different points of views. A lot of my guest hosts will be women because, you know, I got the straight white guy thing covered. And so Check. my <laughs> opinion is covered on that sense. So um, my guest hosts will be a variety of people, predominantly women in various industries. And uh, I've had one male guest host, Brad Goreski, who's he's a gay fashion mm -hmm. um, stylist um, who, you know, he gives a different point of view. So I just try to talk about like uh, topical things, relationships, dating and, you know, work. And we just get into it, have some fun and it's Very been cool. fun. And so then we'll, you know, a little bachelor tea here and there. Of course. Do you, are you watching Colton season? I am. I like it. Yeah. I like it too. What do you think of Colton? We love, love him. Okay. Well, now I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. We what, what is so great about Colton and so bad about I me? And I like Colton. I think it's the virgin thing. It's just, honestly, I think it's precious. You're just a sucker for a storyline. I'm sucker for a good virgin. Right. Uh, and now that I think about it, we really are just like, said, we've been to so molded by the Bachelor producers. We always like try and stay the, above it. We're those like, soundtracks get you. They so do. when they announced him, you were fine with it. Because yes. a lot of people at the time weren't. weren't. No, we were in the minority of people who were actually really excited about it. Wow. Okay. But Becca had some great guys. We would have been really happy with any of them. Yeah. You know. Kind of. Not so much. Oh, what are your thoughts on Caitlyn and Jason? Great. Sure. You know. Do you know him? I, I met him once. He's a great guy. Yeah, yeah very and cool. And I haven't really talked to Caitlyn, but they seem like right. two well, attractive people who would like each other. You <laughs> kind of went in, after her and Sean broke up, you did some podcast. I forget which mine. one. His. Oh, it was yours? Yes. <laughs> oh, I thought it was one of the... Um, well, it's mine now, so I'm all oh, the, okay. all the you, so you did from You episode. did the Vile Files, and you kind of went in and, and unleashed some things that you wouldn't have ever spoken about had they not broken up. It wasn't so much unleashing. It was just like a... Just, you know, my, my first guest host was... Um, Ashley Grace, um, mm -hmm. who is a diehard uh, Bachelor fan. So we just started talking about it. She was very excited. We were talking about Colton season and got into it. And I was like, oh, fine. You know, here we go. Um, and it's honestly nothing really that juicy for my, but it was a lot of the behind the scenes that kind of led to me going on that season or all the stuff right. that happened during that season that, quite honestly, I just kind of shut my mouth because. I didn't know how much Sean, you know, Caitlin had told Sean, and mm -hmm. you assume she tells him everything, but you never right. know. And um, I figured uh, it might not go over well. Had you know, I just kind of was kind of protecting her in that relationship. But right. again, it's nothing like any scandalous. It's just how things went down. Yeah, Did you it hear provides from her? more context for us to understand. Sure. Did you hear from her or him? No. No, I don't. I don't know if she was thrilled. I don't. Uh, I, I wouldn't think, but. Uh, but you know, she's welcome to come on my podcast. I don't think she Shook. will. Yes. Plug it. Plug it. Um, I have a question for you that I've been sitting on for three years. Oh, yeah. No, this gosh. is such Should a good question. No, it's not about it's not you. About you know, you? when people are like, "Hey, I." <laughs> right. I don't mean to make you mad. Um, <laughs> no, but here we go. Is, and it's not even putting you on the spot. Who was the country star that Sean Booth was Eskimo brothers with during your season? That was a big storyline. <laughs> I honestly don't remember. Liar! Was I it, really, I really don't. I'm not a country music fan. Was it fan. Sam Hunt? That was. 
Maybe. That was Jackie's theory. I that really, was my theory. That, sound, that kind of rings a bell, but I really don't know. Oh, this is oh. so disappointing. And, and, and truth is, is that when that was all going down, the, this again, I think I might have said this, but when I was coming on, I was very nervous because I like I was coming for the girl. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was coming in as like the old villain. villain. I was coming in late, so like that is not the recipe for no. like being well, re well received. And so I was really nervous about like, these guys are gonna hate me, like, but screw it, like I like the girl. But my friend Ron from Andy season was friends with Sean. So I was going in thinking, all right, well at least, at least Ron's buddy is there and I'll be friends with him. <laughs> right. So like funny. the one guy. Right. And he was the one guy in, and, and Sean just hated me. He just yeah. like, he, I met, and the guys, to my surprise, the guys were all really nice. They're like, hey, whatever, you're here, it's cool. Yeah. And Sean just wouldn't talk to me. He'd walk past me, I'd try to say hi, he would just keep ignoring me. Focused. And he, he just kind of throughout was, you know, quite honestly, just, constantly talking shit. I just got annoyed and I wish I didn't, but I, finally I was just like, when you he see me airing that, I was like, you hear the other guys talking. So I just, I gave in and I started talking shit too, which was was dumb, but I really don't remember. I just- That's who, so funny. Like it's so all, long ago. Everyone's talking about everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, like on Colton season, this whole like, well, she said this or blah, blah, blah. Like, sure, like it's all it's true. It's so boring. Like it's all like whatever though too. So. Yeah. Right. And there are those conversations of who's going to be the next bachelor or bachelorette in the house. Yes. Everyone, yes, of course. Okay. I mean, everyone's early on. Everyone is. You don't. Everyone's just like, what's going on? You know. Um, everyone is going in thinking. In reality, they're like, oh yeah, Colton's cute, but like, I don't know if I like him, kind right. of thing. Um, and certainly, there's going to be conversations about, like, oh, this is crazy. We should be friends. We should hang out afterwards of the show and we don't win or what. Right. Like, of course there's conversations like that. And then what happens like two or three weeks later, a lot of the people get sucked in and they're all in. So I absolutely believe that some version of what they're like Cassie and Kayla are being accused of happened. I also like, also think they're sincere, right. right? I also think they absolutely in the moment are like, I love Colton. I want to be with them. Like, you can, it can be both. And because in two weeks, two weeks like that is feels like a year in that yeah. world. Um, and it's a lot of gotcha moments. Like again, like when I was on Caitlyn's season, literally everything I was coming out of my mouth, the guys were like, especially Sean, were just like, what can he say? <laughs> right. To like, you know, Dig up, 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 you know, yeah. like, you know, gotcha. like a lot of gotcha moments. So it's, you're just caught up in that world. Pressures are high. Everyone is just, and, and at this point in the season, everyone's on edge because it's like, make it to hometowns. Right. You know, like the final four is like, to make it to the final four, you're like in a class of your yes, own. Yes, Like to be top four, is there's top four and everyone else. Right. And the women and the guys kind of sense that. So the week before is, it's like everything's heightened and you just want to get to hometowns. Do you read spoilers? I hear spoilers from time to time. Do you know who wins this season? This is a no spoiler zone, so I'm excited if you do. <sighs> I, I, I know what happens. Okay. Interesting. On, okay. Which is a bummer because like I it's did such it for a, a while and I was really enjoying watching as someone who like had no idea and then like it's impossible. someone like says something I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Don't worry, just tell me. It's hard. Um, it's really hard not to just like click it. So, yeah. so you read. She, no, so I, tr I used like to read. Stuff. I spoiled Lauren B. Uh, for me in Ben's season and I hated the way that it felt so I never did it again. Felt dirty. But in my DMs <laughs> and like just people like sending it to me it's like I didn't ask but they just say blank wins. I knew Vanessa won. Yeah. And you guys were not sipping the old Vanessa? It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> um, no I mean we we try and see past what we're shown. It's like they and and. But Vanessa was like Kind of a fan favorite until maybe the very yeah. end where there are some cracks in but the But now I were... live my life yeah. being like, I'm not going to believe what the producers want me to believe. Like, they made that guy, Jordan, the male model, a villain, and he ended up being a good guy, you know? Yeah, he's a funny, interesting guy. So yeah. I try like, not to, you, to I, buy into their when I narratives. Watch it, I don't see villain. And maybe it's because I've been on the show. Yes. But like, I see, like, well, you guys liked Corinne. Love. But right. like, Corinne is by all standards the villain of right. my season. We liked Corinne despite their efforts. And I think it was also because we met her early on while oh, you yeah. were, okay. well, as it was you airing. Right. No, every time we meet someone. I automatically like the contestants that follow me on Instagram more. And, and that well, is what honest. it is. Hannah G, love her. She so follows me. All I had to you. do way back when was <laughs> yeah. just like. No. Follow and slide. Wait, it's and true. Just been... I mean, I, there was a lot of shit I like, wanted to talk about Becca, but she followed me on Instagram. So like, I just didn't give it the effort, you know? Yeah. Huh. So if, because of my dismissiveness that's, towards you. Maybe that's where it all started. Maybe. <sighs> okay. You like Colton because he follows you on Instagram. 
There That's you what go. I'm saying. Wow, lesson wow. learned on my part. Yeah, wow. and lesson learned to all future contestants. Just follow me on Instagram and I'll be nice to you. So yeah, no, it was uh, it's okay. <laughs> after Corinne and also Olivia Caridi, who like was the villain of her season mm -hmm. and we had met her and she's just the nicest person. Yeah. And so then we started to turn it on its head. So like this season, love Demi. So it's love. interesting, safe to say that the v v typical villains that you have met have been some of the more interesting people you've met. And like nice. Yeah. And then we could also see how the Breaking things the that they would floor. say would come um, off in a weird way on TV. Well, I always, on that show, right? listen, anyone, anyone, everyone is a villain and a hero at any given moment. Mm -hmm. You know, no one for the most part is as bad or as great as they come across, right? Because the show is very simplified. Everyone gets siloed into a character. And if they want you to look good, they'll want you to look great. Yep. Um, and then if they want you to look bad, they'll make you look terrible. And when you really watch it, especially without the music, no one's really doing anything. Nothing. Right? <laughs> and everyone's just like saying what we've all said. We've all talked shit. We've all been catty. We've all like had a funny look at our face. Our cameras are on us 24 seven. Right. And when you're boring, you're just like, or you burp phone. or something or right. whatever. And then like you put that face with some sort of comment. I mean, so stuff like that. You know, listen, there's exceptions to every rule. There's some people from the franchise I don't particularly care to hang out with. Like? Mostly. Um, well, I mean, I'm not a huge, like, I don't hang out with Josh Murray, you know. Like, I don't think he's a bad guy. <laughs> but like, I, you know, he's at any given moment. You never really know when the, totally. the rage will come out. Right. right. Um, but right. we're also just different people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like the Robbies and, and Chases of the world, like I don't have, like they're just simple creatures. Right, yeah, different. They're Thirsty. just different and it's fine, right? And then I have friends from the show, but like again, no one's, the hero, hero villain, I will say the villains often tend to be people who, especially early on, are the people where the lead doesn't necessarily have a romantic interest in. Mm -hmm. And the people who are also not afraid to just do and say whatever they want. Right. I mean, you guys would easily be villains. And I say that with a no, compliment. I couldn't agree more. Is that like, you're just kind of like, whatever, fuck it. I'm going to yeah. like say whatever. I have a lot to say. Um, and again, like sometimes it can change. Like the like with Corinne, like, okay, she had a nanny. I was like, okay, everyone wants to meet the nanny. She's going to go to hometowns. Right. Fine. And so that oh. gave her time to like kind of change her story arc. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so like if I send, if I send Corinne home week five or six, she never like has those moments for people to be like, actually, she's kind of funny. Yeah. You know, actually like, or Hannah B. If Hannah B goes home like week four or five, she's just the bitter uh, pageant, pageant, queen. pageant queen who like, <laughs> but like by the end when she got sent home, you're like, this is, she's probably a Sad. cool nanny. You yeah. know, she's probably like just a goofy girl who yeah. I can relate to, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's just kind of how the show goes. So do you think Colton's keeping these people around to give them that opportunity or, or it's more orchestrated than that. It varies. I mean, what I always say, the lead never, the lead will never send home uh, women that they see a, a potential with. And by this stage in the game, it's safe to say that the lead has uh, it narrowed down in their mind to two or three. You always try to keep an open mind, mm -hmm. right? You always try to give every woman or guy, if you're the bachelorette you're in front of, like a chance to like move things along. And there are surprises at times, but like the heart wants what the heart wants. And usually... Um, you know, so if you, if you have your favorite two or three, then like four or five, it's like, yeah, hey, whatever. Like, right. you know, right. um, and so I will say though, like, uh, most leads are very worried about how they'll look. And especially with bachelor guys, men tend to be judged by their choices in women. Yeah. Like I got a lot of heat for taking Corinne as far as I did. Right? Yeah. It was like, how could he pee into the girl who like... But so did you take Corinne as far as you did because you had an interest in her or because she had this developing storyline? But she had a nanny. Yeah, okay. Right. And again, like no disrespect to no. Corinne, I, you know, my connections with Vanessa, Rachel and, and Raven were definitely different. And that's just like human nature. Yeah. I thought Corinne was cool. And like, I thought she was interesting. She made me laugh. She when bought we hung you that out. jacket. Like, yeah. I thought the hometown date was awesome. Do you still have the clothes that she bought you? Uh, I think so, yeah. There was this pea that's coat, fun. though, that I really liked, that it made no <laughs> sense. And like, Corinne's like, oh, let's buy it. And it felt really bad. So I'm like, why are you doing it? It was like a thousand dollars. That is so I, funny. They returned it, but that was the only thing I really wanted from oh, it. Oh, did but. she buy the clothes for real or were they bought? No, the show did not buy them. Really? Wow. The show didn't not Interesting. buy Interesting. Yeah, they're like, fact. if you want to drop a few bills, then it's on you. Wow. Wow. I think, I think the family business is doing fine. I think so, too. Well, so present day, you're doing your podcast doing all about podcast. relationships. Speaking of, are you, are, you are you dating? I'm dating, yeah. That's exciting. Is it easier to date people for you who are in the Bachelor world or not? I, at this point, 
stay away from Bachelor World. I mean, nothing, you know, it's like there has to be a, a unique situation. It's too, like, it's too gossipy. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I, I certainly don't um, look at even every new season as like, all right, what's... Uh, yeah, fresh meat. Um, <laughs> even though Colton has some cute girls. I yeah, try to, like, reach, you know, like, I have talked to some of Colton's uh, women on, on their seasons more of like, hey, if you have any questions and it's very professional, like, let it's me nice. know, like, professionally. Like, <laughs> I can maybe introduce you to some people. Right. Uh, but other than that, like, I'm not, you know... It's, yeah. Are you on any apps? Um, you know, there's that, that elitist one. Raya. Raya. Yeah. But you can't talk about it. It's like Fight Club. Oh, you can't talk he about can't it? You can't talk about it. I'm oh, Raya, I'm married. Raya, 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 Raya. So you're both married? Yes. yes. Wow, how's that going? It's too bad for you. You still like oh, it? So far, so good. So on us? So as, of the, as of Sunday. Yeah, how's it going? Did it go well? It's going great. Oh, yeah, the wedding was great. Um, it was, it made all the planning really appreciate worth it. Advice. Do you want kids? It's Do you want cool. to get married? We should have done this before. And then I would have totally said totally. I would love to have kids. How many? Well, I mean as many as she wants. Yeah. Oh, uh, sweet. Do you see any of your, your girls around town? Corinne lives in LA. I Alexis saw Corinne lived. this week. You did? Yeah. Where? Uh, we're at, we did a thing for People magazine. Was it awkward? It was fine. So it wasn't not awkward? It was, it was like, what? Whatever. Yeah. I, I'm very cautious around like, and then like, Corinne, Corinne can be in the pain in the ass. I mean, she can. <laughs> like one time she randomly posted a photo of her and I without a caption that was from our hometown a I year later. Her. I love her. And it was just like, I wake up and like, the internet thinks we're dating again. I'm like, oh, fuck my life. That you know, is like, so funny. Well, for you, hysterical. I was oh, super us, fucking right? annoyed. Yeah, um, no, for us. Because it was more like, you know, you, it's like, hey, I haven't been talked about in a month, so I'm going right. to post this picture. Well, actually, um, So I try to like, I'm, I'm just like, oh, do I really, like, so I was like, I try to, I just, I'm on guard when I'm um, around the women from my season. Did you know when your season was airing that there was a big rumor started by us that Corinne <laughs> won? You started the rumor. Well, yeah. me, and, or, me and Corinne were together and I made her put on my engagement ring and take a picture because I wanted <laughs> no. to be thirsty and get Instagram unaware. likes. Um, and honestly, it worked so well. But you didn't see that? It was written no. on February. It was on Access <laughs> Hollywood. I'm sorry. Well, it's I mean, during he was when, busy. when my season's going on, there's yeah. a lot of press. There's a lot of stuff. And so you try to stay out of it. And also, like, it wouldn't have bothered me. Right. I mean, it, it actually... Because she didn't win. She so. didn't win. So, like, actually, that's kind of makes it fun that there's other yeah. rumors going. I right. think that was helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So you had you spoke to Rachel. Raven came on this show mm -hmm. and had some words. What'd she say? She said that you didn't have sex. That's true. Okay. What else did she say? And that she I have knew, dementia. She knew that it was Vanessa. Like, she knew that when... Or no, did, did she say the I opposite? I think she said the other thing. She said the opposite. Yeah. No, oh, she, she really said, thought she was going to win. She really thought she was going to win going that into that. That was definitely a lie. Really? Yeah. How, how, explain. Like, is okay. it common? Well, I mean, on, on Ra like Rachel, yeah, she told Rachel that she knew I was going to pick Vanessa. Um, and I won't get into details, but like, like the fan, like I, I, I went into Fancy Suites Week, ten, like I told the producers, listen, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to pick Vanessa. I want to try to make this relationship work. I'm not sleeping with anyone else. Mm -hmm. So we need to figure out how to do this mm. because the old goal of going into Listen, like, emotions are heightened, right? And n everyone who goes in the fantasy suite for the first time as a contestant, there's an expectation of, like, if I like this girl or I like this guy, like, shit's going to go down. Yep, you know, right. you don't know what to think. And especially when it's the guy, you know, women, I, I think in general, like, if the, the stereotype is if a girl wants the hookup, of course the guy wants the right. hookup, right? Because guys will well, <laughs> always want to hook up. And so, but if... By chance, a guy's like, hey, listen, we're not sleeping together. There's the fear of he won't pick me, mm -hmm. right? So, like, how do you go in in that scenario where sex is an expectation um, and suggest that there won't be any sleeping together and yet, hey, I might pick you, you know? So right. my, my plan was, like, I just kind of told uh, Rachel and Raven I wasn't sleeping with anyone. Uh, um, smart. I thought Raven I, – I, I thought Raven um, – being the I've never slept with one, anyone but one person, I'd be like, oh, Nick, you're so precious. And like, <laughs> I was surprised by her reaction at the time, but ultimately, like, and so that was like, yeah, she, she knows. Right. Like, it was kind of this unspoken. I mean, I didn't know for sure. I can't confirm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, but, we didn't, yeah. like, have this, like, conversation. I know you're picking Vanessa. Uh, but I would have been surprised if, uh, I think in that world sometimes, Mike, because I, you know, I was really, cr when Andy and Caitlin broke up with me, I was, Crushed and blindsided. Mm -hmm. So when I was the lead, I had I had a lot of guilt about like, well, I, like making someone. I'm feel a hypocrite. That way. Like I have to do like I was so 
like I was messed up for a few weeks both times being like, why'd they say this? Or why'd right. they do this? Or like, it's just, it, you know, in any breakup, like you kind of always pine about like, well, but you said this, you kind of yeah. hang on to things. So when I was the bachelor, I tried to be very careful. Like certainly I did like, you know, I think she mentioned, I definitely asked Raven like, what ring would she want? You know, like certainly that was probably disin. Well, that was disingenuous, right? right? <laughs> that was totally disingenuous. But like, that's different than like, the private moments of off camera when someone says, I love you, you're like, well, if they're saying it off camera, this must mean something. Right, or when yeah. you have a physical relationship, right. like the, you don't have to do this as a lead. So when the lead would do things like off camera, I always took it as like it meaning something. So yeah. I was very careful to like, so that when I would break up with any of the women, specifically like Rachel and Raven, if they were disappointed and I didn't, you know, you never know like how they're feeling. Yes. But like if they were disappointed, I was, my hope was they would look back and be like, okay, you know, I guess I kind of like, yeah, that didn't happen or that right. didn't happen. And he never said this. So it kind of like, cause you are caught up in the moment. Like mm -hmm. you were looking for signs, but when you leave, leave the environment, I was hoping they would, oh. it would be easier to accept because n nothing really right. that serious happened. Right. You know, like Raven and I, like we never really, we never really talked about like life after the show mm -hmm. um, or things like that. It was, we had a great time and I thought Raven was dope. Like yeah. she was really cool and interesting. I, I liked talking to her and she was very aware. I thought she was really interesting and she had a lot of cool things to say and I enjoyed my time with her, but it was definitely different, you know, in terms of yeah. things we talked about. So I can't say that it was a lie. Maybe Raven actually thought that, right. but I do know that uh, Ra she told Raven that God, oh, Rachel. Rachel. So, but so who knows? I don't know. You have a but. great podcast voice. You do. Oh, you. And you're a great talker. Wow. Yeah. Great well, orator. I do. You know, orator. love to hear myself. So talk. for yeah. you, at what point did you know that it was Vanessa? Because we always hear these stories like all the, everyone knows that it's going to be this person. But like at what, was it night one or like? I mean, listen, I, 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 I had an instant connection with Vanessa when she got out of the limo. And, but as the lead, uh, and, you know, same with Rachel too. Like Rachel, and you know, that's why Rachel got the first impression rose. Uh, Raven was kind of a surprise to me. I, I I didn't like that was more like I after my first date with her the producer was like hey just give her, she's really interesting and she really was and I really was like I, I enjoy being around Raven and people you can talk to in that world is probably one of the most important qualities yeah, yeah. because most of the time you can only talk there's nothing else to do. um and so yeah, he, yeah you know I definitely my Ray, Ray Vanessa was probably always my number one but you're always kind of like well I still have a there's you don't get to hang out with them right so like when I'm hanging out with Vanessa, because also, I mean, or Rachel, like, I don't know Vanessa, like, I got to know Vanessa, but like, you always know, like, you only know so much. So you're trying to figure out, well, if Vanessa doesn't end up being who I think she could be, or what, you know, like, what about me and Rachel? Or what about me and Raven? So there's a lot of, a lot of that. But, wow. So even if you're like thinking, I think this could be my person, you still kind of go on the dates and keep an it open out. mind. Yeah. It's a mental game. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's not, it's being the, the lead is not easy. Would you ever do it again? No. Okay. Would you no do one paradise? Wants that. No, I mean, I'm done looking for Well, now for that I know and love you, I want you back on my show. Right. Paradise is fun. Yeah. I mean, paradise would be the only thing I would never, I'm not going to go on paradise, but it's fun. You can like, yeah. bartend like well. It's super fun. Like, I had an enjoyable experience, uh, but uh, it's stressful. Uh, yeah, too hot too. Everyone's sweating through their shirts. I had a great time. I and mean, paradise is fun. The other ones are, you have fun at times, but it's, a lot of work. It's it's just stressful. Yeah. And especially if you give a shit. Like if yeah. you do care about someone, yeah. it's like like the Cassie and Kaylin. That's why like I don't think it's disingenuous because you can tell they're a little fucked up about it. All. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they may leave the world and be like, I guess I really didn't like them that much. But they what in I'm saying moment. is in that moment they believe what they're saying. That's yes. true. Um, Okay, well, well, thank you yeah. for being Thanks here. Thanks for that in-depth analysis. Everyone head over Seriously. to the Biofiles podcast. When's your next episode come out? Uh, it comes out every Wednesday. Um, also, Natural Habits. I have an essential oil company. Oh, I'm, hit it up. It's yeah. for anxiety and headaches, which is my well, middle for, name. And, 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 uh, Jackie, uh, anxiety, Oscar. Immunity Boost. Uh, they're <laughs> immunity used, Boost. Uh, mental Clarity. They're blends. So we do a uh, USA Organic Blends. Uh, okay, I'm going to so do it. What do you do oils. with oils? Well, you can diffuse them. These are roll-ons. You can oh, put them thanks. directly on your skin. Oh, like perfume? Yeah, well, they're not. A, they, they absorb in your body, um, yeah, it's nice. and they have medicinal benefits. Ooh, yes, yeah. smells. Yeah. And where can everyone get these? Natural Habits. Oh yeah. And Natural Habits on Instagram. Follow. I think it's working. Ooh. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I started using it uh, for anxiety, and then I founded my own company. We sourced from farms uh, all over the world. That's, um, that's so cool. So you're a businessman now. I am. Good for Podcaster, you. Podcaster, is... bachelor, businessman. Business okay, well, keep up with Nick on Instagram, at Nick Vile. Always keep up with The Morning Toast. We're back tomorrow with a podcast-only episode. And uh, Best friends. Best, best friends. You guys, dinner. anything can happen. Any, you know what? What is this? Thank oh, you. What, was, what, what did you say? You guys said you made up, like, some bucket or something yes. because okay, of me. Okay. What is that? Just give me a it second. It wasn't because right? of me, by the way. It, I don't know if this makes it better or worse, but it was because of um, Black China. Okay. Okay. So who's in? The, and I, I used to be in there. So look, this you is your to. face. We crumpled you up because we did, we oh. took you Can out. I see once the you picture you used. Uh, that yeah. That was a compliment, actually. <laughs> give me a second. Okay, at least you picked a, a pretty decent. Is this a picture. good photo of you that you like? But it was. Oh yeah, that's pretty it's, good. It's fine. There was there's some not. You right. could have picked less flattering ones. Yeah, I mean, so basically, this was just the basket the of people. Basket. The umbrage Who people. are these people? I'll explain. These are the basket of people we take umbrage with. And we started with Black China because, like, it was something in the news her, with her every day. We saw her vagina at 11 a.m., and it's just like, well, it was a lot for us, honestly. Like, it was a lot. So we were done with her. Uh, Jacob Sartorius. <laughs> this is Who's that? Claudia's he is, like, piece. an 11-year-old, uh, like, musically star. Do you have who, an 11-year-old in there? He beat me out in the People's Choice Award, <laughs> and his videos are really upsetting. And just, like, he, like, licks his lips and, like, uh, like harasses teenage kids. Well, he's problematic, okay? Like, <laughs> sorry. And then this could be more pertinent. Tristan, well, third trimester sure, Thompson. Sure, yeah. But he, we put him in there when... Don't fuck with the Kardashians. Th but we put him in here when the first cheating scandal happened and, like, they were taking over our lives. It was every Can day. I ask you a question? Yeah. So, he did it once and we all knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's, like... Who's to blame? More, well, it, clearly he's to blame. Really? But, like, I think more Jordan's to blame. Well, sure, too, but what about... I mean, Chloe knew he was a cheater. No, yeah, that's why I don't the think this is so shocking no. because he cheated. I think he's been cheating and he'll cheat again. I, yeah, and so also, like, is, is, this the, is this the Woods. first time he's cheated since the last time? Of course no, not. It's the, the first time he got caught. One. It's the Jordan Woods of it all. That's what's shocking. Oh, because us in, to in the Jordan's, like, Kylie's, Kylie's best, best friend. Best friend. Sister. Lives with her. Girl, Godmother. Godmother. Not Godmother. Not cool. Godmother. So, that's, that's some shit. Here, you can have this. And is Jordan not in there? Uh, well, actually, she should be in here. Let's get Jordan in there. Oh, we gotta get Jesse Smollett in here, too. Oh, Jesse Smollett. Musty, Musty Smollett. Smollett. Can we um, take the 11-year-old? That's a little No, creepy. he's there for what good. It, it's Forever. for Nick Vile. Okay. After when he turns 18, you should Nick have him on your show. I don't think started. he's 11. I think he's like 12. <laughs> oh, well, then it's fine. <laughs> My best is gonna be ending if you keep showing up and taking people out. We'll fix it. Yeah, right. you, there's, okay. I mean, no, I feel sorry. like there's a lot of people you can I'm shade on. I'm sticking to my guns. That's true. That's true. We have to update it. Well, whatever. Who's your least favorite of this season? Ooh. Oh, uh, Courtney. 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 Who's Courtney? She was fighting with Demi. The and she was stylist? like, no, the one. Oh, Tracy. <laughs> Jackie <laughs> hates Tracy. Tracy. She's a wardrobe stylist and her choices were. Oh, she was on one episode with a bad edit. No, but she, Jackie's more with a hating bad her clothes, wardrobe, and then clothes. she's a stylist. Well, that's, and she showed up that's as the fashion enough please. to hit anyone. No, and she, <laughs> no, it was because she showed up as the fashion police, and she needed to arrest herself. Now I'm extra self conscious about these pants. I went like I did. I no, took a fashion no, risk. no, they're cool. I'm they're afraid cool. I'm gonna leave and make. No, me, honestly, about Nick's pants. He wore where last they night. All is working together. Watch shoes, pants, top, and it's I'm not even into men's fashion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Man. I tried to end the show once. Let me try again. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Bye.